everybody. Welcome back to Beginner's Mind, Art Mind. I'm Linda, and we're going to continue our conversation about pastels. Last week, I compared my beloved Sennelier with Paul Rubens. I did some side-by-side -side swatching and talked about what I was seeing in the differences between the two. I also did three paintings with the Sennelier, and I told you what my experience was, what I loved about them, and I also told you what I didn't like about them. So this week, I'm gonna share with you what my experience was with the Paul Rubens when I did a painting, and also I'll share with you what I liked and what I didn't like about them. So, oh, uh, the other thing is there's some really great conversation going on about pastel brands in the comments of, the, of last week's video. I'll try to remember to post a link to it below this video, in the show notes below the video. So be sure to check that out, click on that link and look under the comments because there's some great information. There's a lot of things I didn't realize and it really informed what I might try next in my you know, searching around for the perfect priced and perfect quality pastel. All right, I think that's it. So let's dive in to the video and I hope you enjoy it. I finished up my Paul Rubens oil pastel painting yesterday afternoon. I did film it, but about three quarters of the way through, I went downstairs to take my lime meds. And when I came back up, I forgot to restart the video. So I'll play what I have, but there's going to be the, the end part of the video missing. At, towards the end, I did add in these oil uh, pencils. They're Rembrandt, Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor um, oil-based pencils, I guess. They're, they're hard. They're like colored pencils. They're not like pastels, but they do work good with oil pastels. And they gave it some added texture. So my thoughts on this were, for the first half of the painting, I really disliked these pastels. They were crumbling in big chunks. Um, I don't know how well it shows. It's not, it doesn't look in the viewfinder like it's showing very well, but this is very chunky. And I don't just mean thick, there's hunks of the pastels that just kept breaking off on this. And that was challenging because then you would try to move them and it would streak color where you didn't want it to. And they were, so in the beginning they were crumbly and they just felt inconsistent. They felt waxy to me. And something strange happened during the second half of the time that I worked on the painting. They seemed to soften the more I worked with them. I don't know if it was my body heat, warming them up. That was my instinct from the beginning when I unboxed them was that they felt like they, they just would work better if you heated them up a little bit. So they did. So I'm in Vermont. It's the middle of winter and it's cold. I'm wondering if the people who gave them positive reviews live in warmer climates. That might explain why they found them easier to work with and why they were saying they were so creamy. So, you know, I have to give them that. The other thing I have to say, though, is I, I just don't understand how the reviewers were comparing these with Sennelier. I just think that is such a far stretch. And I think if you have used Sennelier and you buy a box of Paul Rubens, I think you're going to be really disappointed. I think if you have never used any oil pastels and you're looking for something to try out, I think there are much worse brands. I've heard uh, comments from my viewers like the Pentel ones smell really bad and there's other of the less expensive brands that are very, very even more crumbly and dry and transparent. So these definitely are not the worst. If you started with these, you might be really happy with these. The only thing I warn against, and, and it blows my mind again that this was not said in the reviews, if, if they had said that you could not buy these open stock, in other words, you could not buy a single stick when you ran out of it, 
I never would have purchased these. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's a huge waste of money to have a set. Sorry about the camera wiggle. Where you're going to use your whites, your yellows, your blues. You know, I tend to use a lot of grays to tone down colors. You're going to use those up and then be stuck with all these colors and not be able to replace certain colors. So you have to figure that out into the calculation instead of buying a whole nother box of, of a lot of colors that you might not need. The only thing I can say that I do think was positive about the lack of control with these is that um, it, it did accomplish a loose painting. I do feel like I came up with a very expressive, very loose painting that would have been slightly tighter had I been working with the Sennelier just because I know how to use them better and I think that they are easier to work with. I do actually like how expressive and kind of funky this painting came out. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm not at all saying that you cannot accomplish a good painting with the Paul Rubens oil pastels.
So final thoughts on the Paul Rubens are mixed. Let's say mixed. I will say again that I wouldn't purchase them just because you can't buy open stock. And to me, that's a waste of money. So, and a waste of product. So I guess that's my final verdict on them. You can accomplish a painting with them. They are definitely not the worst that is out there, but they have issues. So that is the 48 piece set of the Paul Rubens oil pastels. And continue the conversation in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you love these, let me know. I'm interested. I'm not, you know, my, my opinion isn't the, the authority on oil pastels. I'm very new to oil pastels. Perhaps with more use, I would get used to these. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a lot about the Paul Rubens, and I hope it helped you make a decision whether this is something that you're interested in purchasing or not. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing the painting process for this spread. Again, I apologize that I left a smidgen of the process out, but I, I know there's enough content there that you, you got a good idea of how it was working for me. In a future video, I will be reviewing the Mungio Gallery and giving you my honest opinion as I did with the other two. And I'll also be trying out the Sennelier fixative on some of my sketchbook spreads. I still am trying to decide whether I'm going to do all of the pastel videos together in one shot, one clump together, or if I'm gonna break them up so that, um, like with a sketchbook tour or something, so there's some space in between because I did pastels last week, pastels this week, and the Mungio will be another week. And then a very generous viewer has offered to send me some Karen Diash um, Neo pastels, which I've never tried before. And she's interested in seeing me do a, a demo on those. I hope you're enjoying the pastel videos. I hope there's some useful information. And remember to check the show notes below last week's video and this week's video to find the links because the comments have lots of great information in them in last week's video and i imagine this week's video will too i've i've learned a lot from just reading people's comments and their experience and uh, it's helpful it's good helpful information people are being generous with their knowledge okay and i'd love to hear from you leave a comment let me know what do you love what pastel do you love what pastels do you wish you never bought and why and uh I guess that's it for this video. So have a great week and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.